Hello and welcome back to another FL Studio 20 basics video. Today we're going to be looking at the mixer, we're going to be going over all the basic and advanced functions, showing you how to use it. The last video in the series was all about the channel rack and there's going to be a little bit of crossover but not too much. So the mixer is where you're going to be sending all of the audio in your project and this is where your song's really going to come to life. You're going to be changing the levels, the panning, you're going to be adding effects like reverbs and delays, side chaining and sending audio all over the place. And it sounds a little bit complicated, but FL Studio makes it super simple. So the mixer is really easy to customize and it's split into three main sections. First thing I'd note is just to get it into a setting that works really well for your screen. So if the mixer isn't open, you can press F9 to open it or press this button up here to open it. You can resize vertically just by dragging from the top. And sometimes when you resize, some functions disappear or reappear, but that's okay. I'll explain what all of those are in just a minute. You can also resize from the right or from the left just to make it fit your screen. And if you drag it around your screen, it can sometimes dock into a section, like it's sort of docked into the left hand side there. The main sections of the mixer are broken up as follows. So at the left hand side, we have a current track which displays the volume level of the current track and you have the option to add some effects onto the current track. The master track is where all of your audio is eventually going to be sent and this is where you put your sort of mastering or, or sort of full mix bus effects. The middle section here, which is called the middle dock, is where you're going to send all of your individual tracks, so your drums, your instruments and all of that, so that you can give them individual effects. The right hand side dock you can access by clicking here on this grey bar and this just opens up a few more and you can use these as sends or you can use those as normal mixer tracks as well. Each track has a unique track inspector which is by default on the right hand side of the mixer. I'm going to go into this options at the top left and I'm going to change the view so that the track inspector is on the left hand side. I prefer it there because I like having all of my menus and options all over on the left hand side of the screen. Each track has an individual uh, effects chain like this. This panel at the side is where you're going to be using your effects like your EQs, your compressors, your reverbs and such. Just before we get into the effects I want to keep talking about the customization. At the top here there's a, a button here that says compact. If you open it up there's loads of view options so you can set it to a wide view, an extra large view and just find something that really suits your screen, your resolution and sort of your eyesight as well. On each insert from top to bottom what we have is the number of the insert. We have the insert name which you can change by right clicking, pressing rename and recoloring it by picking a color from over here. You can mute it by pressing this green button. This track would be muted now it would be on. The next dial is the panning dial, so this would send audio from the left, middle, right or anywhere in between. We have the option to change the polarity, swap the left and right channels, change the stereo width from more stereo, more mono, so like wider, thinner. We have the fader and this is controlling the output volume of the channel, so low, high. Then we have this button down here which turns all the effects on and off. This button here sets the plug-in delay compensation so we can sort of set it manually in milliseconds or samples or beats if you're having some problems with that. And then you can arm the disc to record. Now I've covered recording uh, using the mixer in one of the last videos on this channel. I'll just leave a link right here in case you're interested in recording through the mixer because I'm not going to cover that in this video. You can also resize the mixer by pressing these sort of three dots here. You click on them and then you can drag vertically to change how high the faders are or how high the graphical display is. Let's send some stuff to the mixer so that we can sort of start hearing stuff happening and having a bit of fun with it. So in my channel rack video I showed a simple way to send audio to the mixer which is just scrolling up inside this box and now the kick would be getting sent to four but I also showed that you can select everything together these are all drums and then what you can do is you can select an empty track on the mixer and you can select channel routing route selected channel starting from this track and that's just routed all the drums to the mixer. So now if I press play you'll see that they're all being sent to each of these individual channels. Now that they're on these individual channels you can say click on the snare, you can go to its individual effect and then you could add something to that. So I'm going to add a reverb to the snare. 
and that reverb was only affecting the snare. On the effects chain, you have the option to add up to 10 effects. You can mute the effect and you can also blend the wet and dry of the effect. So I'm gonna play the audio, I'm gonna mute the reverb and then I'm gonna fade the reverb so that we have a little bit less of it. This is really useful for helping you blend in effects. And as you can see, if I go over to the shaker, the reverb disappears because this is an entirely new set of effects and I can add effects that only affect the shaker or the snare or the kick individually. I know that seems like a pretty obvious concept to a lot of people, but for a beginner, understanding these sorts of things can be a little bit daunting. I have another video showing how to make groups on the mixer, but for anyone who hasn't seen that, you can simply hold Control and Shift you can select all the channels that you want by clicking and dragging. And then if you go down here, you can right click and select route to this track only. And then it routes all of the channels just to this. And then you can give it a name like drums, recolor it. And then we've effectively created a drum submix. Something to note now that we've set this up are these cables at the bottom. These cables show you where the audio is being sent. So in this case on the drums bus, the audio is going from the drums to the master. 100% of it is going. Now, if, I, if at any time in FL Studio you're unsure of what a value is or what a dial does, if you hover over it, it shows you in the top left uh, hint box what it does. So it says to the master, and if I click on it, it says 100% of the signal's going there. I can see that the audio from the kick is being sent to the drum bus, but not to the master. It goes to the drums first, then out to the master. And it's the same for all of the uh, tracks in this drum bus. There's so many options for routing, which I'll try to cover in another video. But if you're on the track that you want to route, you can click on this arrow at the bottom of any other track. You can right click and you can sidechain, sidechain only, route or route to this track only. Playing around with these different options should sort of show you what they do, but they're all useful in their own right. On the mixer, you can also add separators very easily. So you can right click, gives you lots of information and options for for the mixer track and there's this group option you can just press separator same over here and it just kind of separates it off makes it a little bit easier to sort of distinguish between your groups i'm going to go over all the options available on one track while the audio is playing so that it makes a little bit more sense so i'm going to play and then i'm going to solo the snare and now that we have the snare soloed i can mute it or turn it on again i can pan the signal to the left and to the right, I can reverse the polarity. I can swap the left and right. And then I can make it wider or thinner. And then this option at the bottom will let me turn the effects on and off. And then that lets me change the volume. One thing to note is that this volume is after the effects. So if you add reverbs, delays, EQs, this will be changing the volume out of those effects, not the volume going into those effects. I have another video all about gain staging, which I'll leave in the description because it's a little bit too much to go into right now. The last thing I'd say is that there are loads of different ways to customize this. If you go into this option at the top left, there's all sorts of things that you'll discover over time. A pretty important one is the view tab. So you can change the view so that uh, it's not a dB meter, it's a waveform instead. I'll just show you this right now. You see these waveforms? That can be really, really useful when you're programming drum grooves. You can change the naming, you can change the routing cables so that you see them or don't. You can see a compact plugin list and you can change the brightness of the mixer. So if it's too bright, you can just change it down so it's a bit lower, more subdued, maybe more professional looking and there's all sorts of options available in these menus. But that's really an overview of the mixer and hopefully enough to get you going. If you didn't want to make a group and you just wanted to route an individual track, a great way to do it is just to scroll up and down on here, rename the track, whatever you want to name it, and you're good to go. Uh, it's really good to stay organized as you're working in a project, so don't be afraid of naming, using colors, using icons in the mixer, all sorts of stuff to try and stay organized. Just try to find a way to make this mixer work for you so that it fits into your workflow and sort of helps you create the sound that you want to create. There's nothing to be scared of here. And remember that at any time, if you're unsure what a dial or a button does, FL Studio gives you a hint up in the top corner and it lets you know that that's the panning, that's the volume, that's the stereo separation. But thank you very much for watching. I do hope this video has helped you get off on the right track and I hope to see you in future videos too. Bye for now. Always find a way to
to end.